Hey there, I'm Tracy Rigdon, and this is the Contrast Project Lounge Podcast. Often random, but always relevant, always real, and practically nothing is off limits. This podcast is for you. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Hey there, guys, and welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for joining us here in our live stream presentation. We've we've taken a short sabbatical. We were off for a few weeks, and and my goodness, uh, Jim, uh, my co-host here tonight, Jim Alabiso, uh hopped on a plane and flew halfway around the world. What what made you do that, Jim? What made me do that? Yeah, what made um, you hop on a well, plane and, and decide to go travel over well, to the Czech Republic? <laughs> well, well, yeah, years, years, uh, a few years back, I guess it was like 14 or 15. Um, I, uh, when Coldplay had come out with their um, Ghost Stories album, that was kind of like Chris Martin's breakup album with Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm-hmm. And right, right. I, when I saw the cover of the album, I was just like, "Wow, you know, this is the way it is." This is this what it looks like. And I was like, oh, we, "Man, we can, how awesome is that, right?" So, so anyway, uh, I was in the middle of writing a story, and uh, it was a little piece of the wing that. Uh, actually, <laughs> Anyway, oh, good. Uh, Go ahead. so so the 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 story that I was writing was a two part short story for Arvis magazine, and I uh, I um, uh, it was kind of you know like one of these stories where the guy saves the girl kind of situation, and don't forget uh-huh. this is 2014, so so we didn't see a lot of anything different. You know, you didn't see a lot of, you didn't see women characters being the heroes, right? Sure. So there was that one part in the wings here, which I'll get a close up later, but it's down on the bottom left hand side. You see the girl floating through the water, pulling on the guy's arms. Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, that's kind of really, really cool. Oh, here's the close up right here. Right. There we, there like, we go. I'm going to totally flip this. I'm going to totally flip this story on its end. So I needed some <laughs> illustrations for it. Of course, I wasn't going to use Coldplay stuff. So I, I, I just kind of thought, okay, I'll try to email her or Facebook or something. And because she has a, I looked, I went on her website, uh, and uh, she has a, a series called the Flow series, which kind of looks like this, and. Um, and this is very appropriate for my for the story. So I asked sure. her if I could use one of these pieces for the story, and we were instantly connected. I mean, you know, just the conversation, and and I've, no, I've known her now for I guess on and off for ten years. I mean, mm-hmm. and um, so that's kind of how we got to know each other. Um, uh, and for and you know, for those. And yeah, and for those that are listening in or watching or or didn't catch at the beginning, uh, Jim is talking about his good friend Mila Verstova. Yeah, so um, thanks, Tracy. So um, after she did that, you know, it just became a very popular design because you'd see you'd see this all over the place. And, I see that, uh, and it became a big part. There's Chris Martin signing everything and. This kind of thing. So, um, so uh, she gave me the piece of art, and it's in Arbus Magazine as part of the story, which was really, really great. So that's kind of how we met. And then a couple of years later, I was in England. I wasn't too far from her home, which was in Cheltenham. And um, uh, we had some tea and all that and had a nice conversation. And... Uh, uh, so that's kind of how it all started, but mm-hmm. uh, it basically, and this is kind of part of the reason why I like ha- I wanted to have this conversation with you is because this is how art begets art, you know. 
this kind right, of like right. island that's on these bizarre. And that inspired me to, to change the storyline a little bit, you know, a lot actually, <laughs> and turn it into something totally different, you know. And right. that's one of the things I like about being a writer, or, you know, a songwriter, or writing a play, or writing a book, or whatever, is that I, I get inspired, you know, from other people. And uh, I try not to plagiarize. <laughs> <laughs> so well, um, yeah 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 so it was kind of cool but so when i found out she was doing this show it's a, it's the name of the show is called delegate matters pretty much every piece of work of art in the show is in this book um mm-hmm. and uh it's pretty thick pretty much all the artworks are in there it took her two years to put it together but wow um yeah so, but it was basically called the Homecoming Exhibition because she's from this town of, of Roddick Kravala. I'm pronouncing it right this time. But this is the train <laughs> station right here. So, so the only way I could go is if James watched my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I knew that, I bought the I bought the tickets. And uh, I went over there, and so this is kind of like where it looks, where it is. So um, there's Prague, and this is like if you were to drive this, it's about an hour and a half drive uh-huh. to Roddy. So, um, so I basically flew from Jax to Atlanta, Atlanta to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Prague. A driver took me from the airport to the train station, which was like 30, 40 minutes. Then I got on a train, took about an hour and 15 minutes to get to Rada Kralova. And once I got to the train station there, which was this, um, then uh, my hotel called the Hotel Grand was about one and a half kilometers away. So it took me 20 minutes to walk there. I was so tired because I've been traveling 20 I hours, bet. you know. I bet. And uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, but once I got there, I checked in. You know, the weird thing is, though, is that the exchange rate is so good, Tracy, that <laughs> I bought like 11,700 crowns for 480 <laughs> bucks. And, I, you know, I still, got, I, I still got loads of cash sitting over here and, and crowns, you know. Um, so it's really inexpensive as opposed to England, where I'm going, I'm going to back to England in October. But uh, so it's so the Hotel Grand, you get a you know really nice deluxe room and everything. Everybody was so sweet and so nice there, and um, and it was a very sincere kind of sweet and nice. You know, it's not the kind of like I have right. to be nice because I'm in customer service. It was just everybody's just so nice. And, um, but that got for like $73 a night in U.S. dollars here. It costs like two something, you know? Sure. It was like crazy. So anyway, so that was kind of that. And, um, uh, and then the article I was talking about was this article I, I did for, um, for, um, Arbus, uh, Arbus magazine. And it was mm-hmm. about her whole Coldplay gig and, and her beautiful motherhood uh, art that uh, art um, set that um, she did. And this was like in 2014 because she was giving birth, right? Or she was going through a tough pregnancy during that time, you know, and doing this. As a matter of fact, in the in the movie that we're going to talk about a little bit called Links for Coldplay, there's a there's 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 a shot of her um uh doing this artwork on her washer and dryer using it as a table <laughs> it's amazing so so but if you look this is what i want people to see is if you look at this um very intricate you'll see that it is very intricate it's very very super intricate you'll see that every it's it's basically a broken heart made out of angel wings and every feather in the angel wing has a story in it and hmm. uh it was just such a it was such a beautiful piece but 
it has, it says so much, you know. And you can look at one little section, like you can look at this this guy walking over here, or this guy kissing this girl, or this girl sitting on the steps next to a lantern while there's a tornado out the window. You know, right. I mean, there's just so much going on here. So the point is, is this does not start off looking like this. This starts off hatching on plexiglass. I had read so where she does. I had read where she does uh, that etching type, uh, that etching style, and and how much depth that you know it adds to the piece, just, the finished piece. Sure. Picture yourself as an artist with a big piece of plexiglass or whatever, with an exacto knife, and yeah. and doing this detail, <laughs> and it's a subtractive art. Right. So right. Like, if you right. screw up, you can't stick a piece of clay in it, right? So. You know, but then once it's done, then she'll start um, pulling paint on it in different shades and this kind of thing. Then it goes on a press, lays the piece of paper down and, you know, does the sort of rolls over, you know, all that. And then you get all the shading that you see up there. And I don't know if I'm pointing in the right place with the camera, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so you get all the shading out there and whatever. So um, during her interview, let me see if I can shrink this a little bit for the camera. So this is one of the questions I asked her. On the left wing of ghost stories, a man and woman pulling at each other and a fish swimming about as if underwater and inspired the story from the last issue of Harvest. What was your inspiration? And this is the way she talks. It's so lovely. And it's very English, you know, even though she's chat, she's very English, too. It's so lovely to know that this motif inspired the story. It's magical and art gives birth to other art. I felt that <laughs> during my collaboration with Coldplay. They inspired me, opened something in me, and things were born in the way that should happen with art. The motif was inspired by their song, True Love. So that <laughs> little piece was inspired by the song, True Love, and that little piece inspired my little piece, you know. <laughs> and um, I felt that, wa that the water would suggest the flow and raging of emotions and a world of urgency where no reality matters. Wow. You can tell she feels talk right. About, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because she's just, you know, at the end of the Wings of Coldplay, or I think there's a preview. So I can give you some links to give to the audience later, but I think there's a preview or trailer. And at the end, it's Chris Mark. They're asking about what they, what he thought about Mila for stuff, and he says, she's an angel. And that's really, <laughs> I believe, that. So... Now, talk about art begetting art. This is one of the pieces of art of hers that they had hanging in the studio while they were recording their album. And at the time, there was no song called Sky Full of Star Stars, which now, you know, became the hit off of that album. They play it at every right. concert now. But he, I guess Chris Martin saw it and started like Sky Full of Stars, you know, and and then wow, a new song was born, right? So it's just art begets art begets art begets art, you know? So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, you talk about Coldplay, and uh, uh, in, in one of the notes I was reading that you have another Coldplay connection, another one degree of separation, or, yeah, or have we already touched? it's kind of weird. Have we, already, have we already touched on it, no? <laughs> no, we haven't, we haven't touched on it. It's just a whole different connection. <laughs> um, on the album um, Viva La Vida, mm -hmm. um, uh, and the, the opening of the, uh, the intro to the song Viva La Vida, you hear a cello. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's the opening of the song. So the guy that plays the cello, his name is, is Dave Eggers. And he's played for everybody, James Taylor, for everybody. And you name an artist, he's probably played cello from Journey, Far, everybody. Anyway, um, I had finished, I got up in the middle of the night one night and I had an idea for a new song and, and it's called Mahog and it's on Spotify now. And, um, and I meant to put that up here, but I just didn't have time. But, um, so Mike Bernos, who was our, our our music guy on Tonight with Jim Alabiza, yep. you know Mike, don't you? Mike Bernos? Yep. So mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, so he wrote to Dave Eger because he had done some work with him before and sent the tracks to him. So a few weeks later, he's, the, you know, the, our, our base, basic tracks that we had already recorded. And um, he came back and he sent back a few tracks of cello to go along with it. And he wrote some notation for a violin. So, <laughs> so and this was uh, um, Rockbot Studios, um, Josh Cobb. Um, I think engineered it, and uh, um, so Aria Apostolova, who's a, a, a violinist that works lives here locally in Riverside. Uh, I think she played for the Odessa Symphony Orchestra in the Ukraine, and um, hmm. so she played the violin part. And uh, <laughs> so now I ended up with Dave Egger on my my song. I didn't perform in the song; I just wrote the music and the lyrics. Um, and, um, so that's kind of the other, the other side of that. It's just kind of weird. I have a few of those. I have a few of those <laughs> weird. One or one or two degrees of separation there. <laughs> right. That's exactly what it is. It exactly happens. It, it, it happens with artists. It happens with artists. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I have a one de degree of separation from, uh, or two degrees of separation from Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Oh my God! How that happened? Well, my <laughs> in in Italy it was Italian Western, you know, good, the bad, and the right. ugly, and uh, um, uh, the one of the producers on it was Eugene Alaviso, which was a cousin of my dad's. <laughs> I only found out because I was watching it, good, the bad, and the ugly. I saw the name fly by and I had to do the research to find out <laughs> where that all came from. So. Big. Anyway. I was a big. I was a big fan of Clint Spaghetti Westerns. I. I, I was. <laughs> yeah, it was great back then. It was great back then, and now he's he's getting only well, still making movies though. You know. I so, know. I just saw him. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so tell me, tell me, tell me, Jim. What was one of the things that uh, you know surprised you the most about the exhibition that you went to see over there, Mila's exhibition? All right. Well. That's a great question. So, um, I think the it was so there was there's a lot of things that surprised me. Um, number one, you know, I just got to hand it to the community there in, in Rada Krolova, the, the, the Czech people there. Everywhere I went, on the street, in the shops, strangers on the corner restaurants the hotel people at the at the at the events that i went to just were just the nicest sweetest loving and i'll tell you the contrast when i got back i got on a plane in prague got to amsterdam and i got to atlanta airport the difference between asking for your passport in atlanta and asking for your passport in the czech republic is, is vast <laughs> so your passport. Open it up. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Welcome to yeah. the Czech Republic, sir. Uh, uh huh. You know, uh -huh. and, and well, may I see your well, passport? And <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, when I when I flew to when I went over to Africa, uh, I flew into Amsterdam from Detroit. Uh, and uh, Amsterdam, that's that's quite that's quite the airport. That's that's a small town in and of itself. The airport there, uh, yeah. But you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, it's a big difference. It's just a different thing. Big. So when you went to Africa, <laughs> did that did that beget other art? Did you inspire Toto's Africa song? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened to me. Uh, at the time, I was still yeah. playing active. I was still playing yeah. actively. Yeah. Playing, playing yeah, the drums. For those of you that don't know, and I know most of you guys know, but this is a rock and roller over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was still actively playing in uh, a, a couple of different bands. Uh, and at the time, at the time, I was playing in one of the larger praise and worship bands in Jacksonville at Christ Church in Mandarin. Uh, played, played over there for several years. And when I went to Africa, uh, we went. We did a lot of stuff with the with the, the small villages and the churches. It was a medical mission trip, and on one of and all these. Let me tell you, when you go to one of those church services in one of those small African villages, buddy, they put on a little party. It's it's it 
church service there is half a day. <laughs> it's not, it's not wow. one hour. No, it's half a day. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I actually got, I actually got to sit up there and beat on an African conga with one of the bands that was playing in one of those churches. So huh. I got to play a drum, play a drum in the motherland. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we'll yeah. just have to change the lyrics. Tracy written and played the drums down in Africa. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's one that's one of the biggies that I remembered. It was really cool. Yeah, I mean it's, it's I mean every culture is different. And when you fly yeah. from Jacksonville to and when you get into Jacksonville, it's a whole different experience. It's not like from one country and it's like one state to another. So it's like oh, a whole yeah. different cultures, you know. So and that's you know that's the way it is. With that, so anyway, to answer your question, that was one of the things that just made me feel really good about being there. Um, in terms of you know the actual event itself, um, I was surprised. The surprise was is how grand it was. It was dazzling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like you know we walked in a gallery and saw pictures. I got an autograph. It has nothing like that at all. It starts off at this um, bio, uh, I can't remember the name of the theater, Biodome. I can't remember the name of Biodome. Um, bio something theater. I have it written down somewhere. And um, uh, uh, Mila got me VIP stuff to go in. The, the, the theater was packed. And um, here's a picture. Here's after, so these are the people outside the theater waiting to get right. in. Right. So this is for a showing of a movie called Wings for Cold. Oh, look, she's got a hat on. Did you see that hat? With the wings. Look at, look at the back, back. Yeah, look at that. Everybody's got like cutouts of her artwork. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I mean, it's just, look at it all she the way down the street. Look at this she, guy. She, I see that. She's she's like a superstar there. Yeah, she really is. Um and um so uh so I was so the Wings of Copa I was surprised to just to see the turnout of people. And then uh then she and the director got up and um talked about the film and putting together the film and really the gist of the film was um you know, how she does her art, what inspires her, um, things in her life that you can see. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I videoed people's feet. Um, <laughs> things that people see uh, in her work, they can see, you know, you can see from her life. I mean, there's just all these connections, right? But she also talked about Chris Mark because he was going through some hard times. So she didn't like go into detail and heavy duty personal stuff or whatever, but she was going through a difficult time. He was going through a difficult time. And and that's what the whole ghost story sings was about. It was just inspired by by grief and loss and separation and all this kind of stuff. So when you watch the movie, um uh yeah, so I want to show you this first because this is another thing that was up on the streets, up going up and down the streets. The flags, flags with their like eyes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, this is the museum where Mila Fursova did her exhibition. This is the Bohemian Museum, and um, and my my hotel was just right up the block. That's me and her husband. We'll talk more about him later. Um. Uh. So. Um, yeah, so I, I was really surprised at the immensity of it all. Right. Um, so anyway, so we go, we go, we do, we do that. Bit. Um, uh, hang on one second. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, she really, it, she really yeah, did so, make an, she made an impression on, on her people there in, in that town. Uh, she's just a beloved okay. character. She really did. Um, so that was like the first part was the Wings for Coldplay exhibition. We already saw that. So this is the audience, okay? So uh, you see me sitting there, um, Mila Persova in her white dress there, and her husband Quentin and the two girls. 
son. And then right behind Quentin is me. And then I'm sitting with her cousin, her next to her cousin. And you'll see that you don't see a whole lot of people laughing. Right. And because it was so moving and so touching um, that, uh, you know, there were just, there was water. There was like six inches of water on <laughs> tears on the floor. The water, no, I mean, the water my eyes watered yeah. up. I mean, yeah. you know, the waterworks were out there, right? So, um, and then, you know, she introduced the movie and all that. And then, um, and then here's a couple of shots from the film. So, um, he, this is the woods where she and her mom, and I think, I think her grandmother too. I think she said she, I, we talked about this. She might come on, on your show, Tracy, on one of these mm -hmm. Wednesday lives. I appreciate oh, the rest right. from all this. Um, and her husband too, he's got a book coming out. I'll tell you about that later. But, um, when you look at the art and the, and, uh, one of the songs, I think it was called Midnight that Copeland did on the album and they, um, and the video, you'll see an etching that looks a whole lot like this. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and so this is where they used to go mushroom, mushrooming uh, okay. when she was a kid. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, actually in California, big warehouse, they turned it into uh, a studio. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a concert hall. And they did the, the only ghost stories concert. I think they did one in um, Albert Hall, but this was the only one in the States because I didn't really tour it. Um, so here I'll show you. Um, I'll show you um, some stuff from the film here. So here's that part that inspired, you know, um, the piece that I was doing. And, um, my story that I was writing, but right, and these are the guys that animated it that are talking. So what happened was after she did this, and well after the album came out, the guys in the band did this entire trunk animation to um, animate this painter. You know the the, the wings, um, right, right piece, and so they surprised her. And uh, uh, so this was like a birthday present for her. But it's basically That's the whole amazing. thing that she did. Can you imagine how much work? I mean, there is an audio track to this, but I couldn't get it to work on here. But if you see all that going on in there and, and depth of field and things going on behind other things and, yeah, you know, this kind of bit. So That's it, amazing. It was, um, yeah, it was. Um and um, so during the film, you know, they talked about, you know, how all this was done and what inspired her, um, how she did the work. And I can't, you know, the film was like almost two hours. So obviously this is just like a, a two minute clip. But um, yeah, see, she's, this is like closed caption. So this is Phil Harvey coming up. They call him the fifth Coldplay member. He's been with them since they were in school. And um they, uh, he's the one that actually brought her in to do this design work for the album. And, uh, um, and kind of convinced the band this is what they needed to do. He's talking in English here. And then they, so check this out. This is kind of like, um, uh, a transition to the concert. Mm -hmm. You'll see the same design. See it up there in the concert right there. So everything in that whole place was all Mila for so work. It was just absolutely wow. crazy. Wow. Uh, so, so that was, that about, was, about, yeah. about, about the exhibit itself, uh, aside from the film being just a, a phenomenal piece, uh, like you said, the amount, the, the amount of time and effort, uh, just animating those things was, it had to be just incredible. But, uh, 
what was uh you know in the why why was the exhibit itself called delicate matters i know we touched on you know some of the topics and why there was some you know some hard times in people's lives in uh, some of the some of the, depicted in some of her artwork but yeah so that's that really is it i mean it's 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 her a lot of it not all of it but a lot of it is her story and and etchings mm -hmm. and art you know and um some of it's just very touching and you know she'll show you some artworks that inspired her you know statues and stuff which i can show you later but before we got to the exhibit i don't want to jump the gun on the exhibit because i want to show you some artwork from the exhibit right before we did that all those people that were in the theater, we all got out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe a thousand. I don't know. There's so many. I just, and you can see them all lining up above there. They're standing by the river, and that's her husband and kids over there. And um, uh, we did this like parade from the theater, I think it was about a kilometer, to the museum. So you see hundreds and hundreds of people walking down the street, you know, walking to the museum. And um, so this is kind of what it looked like. This is, you know, her leading up the whole thing. And um, uh, that's incredible. That's her husband and her kids and all that. And then off on the side, they had these dancers <laughs> doing wow. this really beautiful dance to some Coldplay music using her colors and her designs. And this is really very clever because this was all wound up, this whole dress, skirt of hers or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, but when it's at the height of the dance, they, they were all standing there holding it up with the hair going up underneath it. And, and you see this girl like kind of dancing and doing dance moves inside this cloud. It was just so nice. And this is just hmm. on the way to the museum. And then, she right. launched her little, you know, you see, you see a lot of people with the paper uh, sailboats um, on their head mm -hmm. because she has a lot of paper sailboats in her art. And uh, she, she's launching a sailboat. And by the way, um, while she was doing that, uh -huh. there were three guys on the other side of the river, open water swimmers, jumping in the water and take a swim. <laughs> cold, cold water. Yeah. Um, well, you're no you're no stranger to swimming in cold water. Yeah, I don't mind, and I really, you know, I didn't want to jump in that. So then, when you get to the museum and they have this auditorium and they do the talk about um, the exhibit and what it's all about, and it's all leading up to opening up the exhibit, right? Um. So, uh, so here she is, and she's got some people just throwing flowers at her. It's just crazy you know so um <laughs> yeah so getting to the art like you asked um let me set up the next section here and we'll do art because that's what this is all about anyway yeah absolutely beautiful stuff um, well the whole thing so, the whole thing was quite an experience for you sure it was just like crazy so, um, uh, you know, I, the night, day before, I snuck a peek in the door to see what it was about, and it kicked me out. <laughs> Give it to the roadies or whatever they were setting up. But right. this is like from the doors of the gallery, what it looked like facing in, right? And, um, and then, of course, we got the fish swimming on the floor. This is all her artwork. And people stepping on it, and it makes ripples. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, just, that's kind of like that's kind of like the lighted exhibits that they've been having downtown in Jacksonville. Yeah, they do, and I've seen them at airports too. Uh huh. As a matter of fact, I saw one in Montreal that was similar. When you step on a on a certain area in a mall or a sidewalk, you get you get all that, you know, movement. So there she is with her fish. All right, so now we're going to get to some um, some of the art that I just picked out for here. So this is one of them, and here you know this is there's a lot of this 
guy and girl thing going on here. Uh -huh. um, and then you'll see that there's, again, you know, there's always things inside things, you know? Yeah, and yeah. And her, her house is up here with a little fence and everything, and her dream is down here, and there's a baby and the fish, you know? I mean, it's just so intricate. And the plants and the stalks, you know, if you look at them closely, some of it is fish, you know? It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And so this yeah. is all etched, and then she'll rub some ink on different spots, right? And and do some gradient stuff and rub it and whatever she needs to get the, the look that she wants and then she'll she rolls it out, you know? Wow. So there's another one. Beautiful. Not gorgeous. It is. And you said that uh that all of this stuff is illustrated in that book too. Yeah, it's in this book. I gotta find out, like, if you could order it somewhere. I'm sure we can. Um, yes, yeah, I'll find out. I'm sure we can get it somewhere. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the ones I like, and this was actually inspired, inspired by another work of art that she saw, but it was a different. It was a woman painting something else. There was a model on the other side, but it was an old, old ancient piece of art. But if you look at it again, you'll see, you know, you look at the dragonfly. Mm hmm Yeah. Right? It's a dragonfly sitting there. And, and inside the dragonfly, you almost see the shape of a woman. And then there's a bundle of papers with, uh, like, postcards, I guess, uh, with architecture right. from Czech, Czech Republic. You know, and then, you know, you take a colors, look at the flowers and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's just crazy. And the path that goes off into the distance and just absolutely amazing. Um, wow. And it's one of my favorites. It's so much one of my favorites that they got the shirt. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah. So, and this is the one she did for James Cameron, the director or movie maker. He had to actually commissioned her to do this for his wife. They were all separate pieces that are now attached together, kind of thing. Huh. There's the flying fish. But there are so many different things going on in here. And you'll see, you see, see the that. sailboat on the bottom, to the, um, near mm -hmm. the bottom fish. And yep. all the birds inside the fish. I and know. the little boy with the pail. I mean, it just doesn't stop. A lot of love going on in here. Um, and deer have a lot to do with her connection, too. I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. what it was. But you also see the mushrooms, them picking mushrooms out. So this is all from her childhood. Um, here's another wow. one that I love. Puzzle pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this picture I'm going to show you now, this is, you know, if you want to say delicate matters, out of all the delicate matters that you might see in a piece of art of hers or anybody else's for that matter, in turn, for her, this was the biggest one. This is her grandmother, basically. And she lost her grandmother. And when she started talking about that, I was around, I was sitting with her family. And we, I, I was just, my eyes were like, I was going, you know, rubbing my eyes. And and um, her her cousin was crying. and But all now this means something to her. Yeah. And you had mentioned, you had mentioned to me in our earlier uh, discussions that uh, she uh, uses that her grandmother, the character, her art, that artistic depiction of her grandmother in, in many of her pieces or several. Yeah. I think, I think you can probably find her in different places. Um, you know, um, someday we're going to have to maybe interview. And do you know, uh, Teresa Tapuni, you know, the Tapuni sisters, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Michelle Tapuni, right? So their yep. mother, Teresa Tapuni, who lives right near my mom here in Riverside, wrote a book called The Gifts of Grief. 
and and that was her you know her take her book on you know what what are the gifts that grief brings us not just the sorrow or the pain but what are the gifts right mm -hmm. and you know when you look at art like what we were just looking at there and or songs that people write yeah. you know, or sculptures that people do um or ballet, especially. Mm -hmm. um, it's all based on a grief or a loss, you know? And so so it's like, even the song with Dave Egger on it was, was for me, it was, it's, 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 it was a gift of grief. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, we I think that's part of the thing as an artist, you know, that doesn't mean you can't write about joyful stuff. But you can't have happy without sad. You can't have good without bad. You can't have no. positive without negative, you know, right? So part of it is just recognizing that when you look at a piece of work somebody does or a song somebody wrote or a painting or a sculpture or a dance, if they wrote it, if they created it and they're expressing it, then there's something behind there, you know? They may not talk about it, but there's something back mm -hmm. there, you know? Right. So. Right. Speaking of life which, experiences, life experiences. All right. That, there so you go. So when, when I first started, um, and this was actually, we wrote, uh, I asked for a lot of questions about this series when I did the Arbus interview, and that's, that's almost 10 years now, nine years. Anyway, this series is called Motherhood because she had gone through a very difficult pregnancy, you know. But this is all about... You know, and I may be wrong. If she comes on and says different, so be it. Because I don't remember everything. But I, you'll see that mom's doing stuff for her daughter. And her hair is like a ripper going out the window because she's got other stuff going on as well. When mm. she was pregnant, she was doing this Coldplay thing, right? And you'll also notice that there's actually a couple of mediums in here. There's um, not only etching, but there's paper. You see the shadows mm -hmm. below? That's, yeah, you see I the see paper that. cut out and etching. So she cuts into paper too. So you'll see some of that in her work. So this is one of the, one of the motherhood pieces. This is another one, and I love this one. You know, I'm gonna do my, my drawing and my etching up there with you see the swan and the moon and all that <laughs> i'm gonna get my rest i'm gonna get my yoga and and take care of my little one at the same time <laughs> right right yeah she's saying a lot now yeah huh? yeah so i mean that's the way i look at it but i mean because you look she's got her etching tools right underneath her yep Yep, you can so see she's that. getting her me time in, her art time in, her rest in, and taking care of her babes. And That's this is beautiful. another one along the same theme. I love this. Kids <laughs> doing, her daughter's doing some artwork, right? And she's getting her stretches in. I mean, it's just, <laughs> uh, I'm just amazed. And 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 I don't That's know. And and from what I was looking at too, it looked like she was actually also uh symbolizing umbrella being an umbrella over her daughter because it appeared to be raining you know ab above her. you know i missed that yeah <laughs> that's a make that's maybe if it, that's a really good point jersey that's I, I didn't even <laughs> see that see that's how like we see different things you know <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but yeah no, that's very protective isn't it yep and so was that <laughs> yeah. yeah very very nice yeah so that's kind of the, the art that impressed me the most this is the one i got i have it here all kind of wrapped up but she gave me this and very nice very nice home home this is yeah. called home yeah. one and i'm sure that if we we had hours to talk we could find all kinds of all <laughs> kinds of things yeah there, on the walls you know? and on the walls on the mantle on the walls <laughs> yeah. yeah it just absolutely amazes me 
there's several levels. There's books on the shelf. You know, I'm just kind of like looking at some of this stuff. Uh -huh. I've never, I haven't really looked at this as close as I should have yet, though. But she's also, <laughs> the other thing she does is um, she does illustrations and books. You know, so that's one that she did. And uh, this is what she gave me when I was in England. Um, let me pull this picture down. This is what she gave me in England. This is a book of, of um, traditional uh, Czech poetry that um, that she uh, that she um, illustrated. Nice. And we were just having tea at the coffee cafe or the coffee shop, and uh, she was like, "That sounds inspiring." She pulled this out, no. gave it to me. It was very sweet. Nice. It's nice. It was signed too. It was very nice. And then here's another one she illustrated. It's uh, it looks like it's pronounced uh, Maj, but it's actually my, which is May. And it's a book. <laughs> it's a poem called May. It's a very long poem, but she illustrated this whole book. Beautiful. See, there's that sailboat again. She does look like her, doesn't <laughs> it? It does. So, so she does a lot of that. As well, and she's done other albums and then things of that nature, you know. Um, uh, here's her signing photograph. Uh, so upstairs from there, there was like the VIP soiree thing. So I got to go to that. And I met um, one of their friends, Tim, that they live near in England. Uh, there's an open water swimmer, so they made it a point to choose me and to just <laughs> and introduce me. Um, Very nice. So, so that was kind of like, uh, um, uh, let me see. Hang on one second. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you this. Uh, let me just change my scene here. I th we, you I, and I talked about this earlier, but this one here. That one, I know that. I knew that's the one you were looking for. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There's a story behind so, that. Yeah. So, and this is kind of like, you know, the take home for, for Jacksonville. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have public art. Right. We have a group of people that run that. Um, this is a piece of art in London and um, on Maryville Road. And this hospital is a hospital. Let me see if I can. I don't move this up out of the way so I can see. So this hospital was back in the day, took care of unwed mothers. There wasn't any hospital back in the day that would take care of unwed mothers. And, you know, when you think about that, it's like, were, they, were we that kind of people? <laughs> You know, but well, they asked her, and it's, it's, it's um, I think it's still a maternity hospital, yeah, because that Matryoshka yeah. Oscar might have give us a clue. But anyway, they asked her to do this piece, so it's you know, it's four stories high. But <laughs> look at how well integrated it is into the the architecture of the hospital. Yeah, it flows right up the side there. Yeah, I mean Beautiful. it's just it's just the colors are right, the design is right, the curves are right, everything's right about it. And I would love, you know, remember that wanky thing they were going to put up at the landing? Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, and they did oh. and did, and did oh. away with that. You know, Alert. this is the kind of thing. You know, this isn't really like a mural. This is a piece of art attached to a building, you know? Right. Although I love the murals. We have some of the coolest murals country. But, we do. Um, I would love to see a piece like this on the side of a building that everybody can see when they're driving over one of the bridges. I even mentioned yeah. it to her. At one point, yeah. you know, I don't know what the price to head would be on that, but quite a lot. Quite that's a kind lot. of my 
I'm sure. But that's kind of my my one of the things I took home with me is that I, you know I kind of want to see. Now you know us uh, doing hot, the uh, the uh, the Baptist Hospital uh, franchise, uh, the one downtown in particular. Uh, they have they have storage. They have a storage facility. At least they did uh, back in the day, where they kept rotation of artwork for all their hospitals. So I mean, they're no stranger to buying art. Well, you know that might be a good good thing. You know, it might be a good worthwhile <laughs> suggestion there. But I would like yeah. to see see some of that. But you know, um, uh, the day after that, I um, I met Quentin and uh, Mila at uh, the gallery. They have a cafe there. And she had to go have to some TV spot or something. So me and Quentin had uh, a nice, you know, late lunch and espresso, whatever. And uh, um, he uh, uh, is an interesting man himself. He is, was an architectural photographer. I guess he still does it. I'm not sure. But uh, I guess a year or so two ago, he started a hike around the United Kingdom all along the coast, the whole bit. <laughs> and he blogged, he blogged and photographed his way. He's a great photographer. And the book is coming out soon as well. So at some point, and he started when I, we were having a coffee, he said he would like to come on as well. So uh, right. that was nice. So he'll be an interesting uh, guest at some point. But the, after we did that, that was my last um, full day there because the next morning I went back to Prague. I was going to spend the night there. I didn't get there to late because I missed a train, but um, I, I backpacked around um, around town. So this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's the art kind of architecture. And you'll see a lot of this kind of in her work. You know, this, these kind of drawings and, and shapes mm -hmm. and figures, you know? Yeah. But this is part of the town square, this part right here. And then um, just down from there is this clock tower. And then you can see there's one person way, way up there at the top. Right. And uh, so I went up the, I went up in the clock tower. <laughs> and I actually I went hiking around the whole the city and all of the outskirts. And this is kind of what it looks like from up Beautiful. there. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Um, and then when I got to Prague, um, the drivers picked me up a couple hours early to the airport. I was like, I didn't really get to see Prague. So I'm not going to share all the pictures I have. I'm probably there a few there, a couple of drivers. But this is the guy. <laughs> and, and the guy... The guy was like really, really nice. You know, he was just a really sincerely wonderful person. So I'm sitting here with all these crowns that I'm never going to use unless I go back and I really <laughs> want to go back. And uh, after he brings me back, he gets me to the airport. We take this picture and I give him a tip of 200 crowns. And he's like, what? And, um, uh, uh, but, you know, there, for me, you know, it's like, if I moved there, I'd be a wealthy man, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, um, so I, I just gave him a few more hundred crown bills. He's like, no, 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 that's way too much. He says, you don't know. I says, yeah, I know. I says, but <laughs> you know, I can buy a lot of these with American dollars. So you go have fun and do something or whatever. So it was really nice. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah that's a wonder, wonderful trip and a wonderful description of your friend Mila. And I, I, I certainly do hope we can have the both of them on the show, whether together or separately, would, however we can make we'll it happen. Separately. Yeah, yeah I think we can separately make, would be yeah. good because that'd be great. Yeah, that would be great because it would take Listen, an hour just to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, either one. Yeah, 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 it would take an hour to, at least just talking about some of the stuff that is. Uh, Focusing on her artwork, artwork uh, just like we just did. Uh, Jim, it's been fascinating talking about your journey. Uh, before yeah. before we go, before we go, 
have you got any uh, closing yeah. thoughts for us? Uh, you know, uh, you know, any anything, any closing thoughts? Maybe something sentimental about your trip, or you know, something that you haven't already shared. Well, I think you know, um, I was really inspired. I was on the train back to Prague. Mm -hmm. I I thought I'd write something, so I just started writing up some poetry or something, and then. <laughs> Um, when I got home, I just I printed it. I, really got it out of, I just typed it in and printed it out and just laid it down near my piano. It wasn't a song, it was just a poem. But now it's, a, it's really, it's almost done. So <laughs> I guess the thing is, is that, the thing is, is that, and probably nobody will ever hear it because I just like the creative process. I don't know, because it doesn't matter if anybody hears it or not. But, you know, the thing is, is that, um, when you go to an art show, or you go to a gallery, you go to a Commer or a Southlight, or wherever you're going to go, you go to a dance, or you go to a concert. Um, if you really just open yourself up and listen, um, there's always something that you can take back with you that you can grow from. Always, right. you know. But you got to pay attention. You know, you got to stay aware. You can't be thinking about what am I going to do when I get home. You know, you just gotta, yeah. you just gotta pay attention, you know, and that's, you know, I've been taught that over and over again and had that beaten into my head a few times. Uh, but this kind of gave me a refresher. So, um, <laughs> so, and I want to go back. I really do. Cause it was just a beautiful place. And, you know, the other thing was I was a little nervous, um, because, um, uh, I've never been to a Slavic country before, let alone mm -hmm. by myself. And <laughs> it was just kind of like, hey, I'm backpacking and running crawls, and I don't know anybody. I'm just a grain of sand <laughs> in this universe right now. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, so I mean, just, you know, you just got to, you, know, you know, at least for me, you know, everybody's different, but um, I just love, you know, collaborating with people and I love, looking at other stuff, other people's stuff, and what went into it, you know? It was like when I talked to Mike about his songs that he writes. Um, you know, he, he'll tell me the story behind what inspired him, you know? So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then we inspire each other, right? That's right. Art begets so, art. You know it. So, Tracy, I just want to um, say thank you for... Um, uh, let me share this with the community. I really appreciate it. Anytime, brother. I, you share a it, lot. It, you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a lot what? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you share, <laughs> you share, you share so much with the community, and and you know, we really when I look at the interviews you do, and you know, we it's not just this Wednesday night thing. Everybody that, that follows you knows you're doing. You have like so many episodes of community leaders what? and artists and creators out there. And, We've got a um, lot. We're going to be I, finishing I off the yeah. We're going to be finishing off the season, fifth season. Uh, I finished recording the fifth season the end of May, but that'll still push me yeah. well into that'll still push me into releasing episodes into July, uh, which is when I start yeah. recording I mean, again. <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's like uh, somebody yeah, if somebody yeah. goes looks at your uh, your YouTube place, your contrast project, um, where they can stream stuff. They can probably like you know, I want to know something about Barbara Colicello. They'll find it on there, you know. Or I want to know something yeah. about. Oh, by the way, one other thing I have to tell you: talk about Dave Egger. His mm -hmm. con he's got a concert coming up. He's going to be here. The last Saturday of the month? I don't remember what the date is, but um, it's an event on Facebook. Um, so he's huh. going to be here, and I think he's going to be at Friday Musical. Got a new album coming done. out. So. I'll be yeah. done. So yeah, I'll send you more information about it later, and I'll put it on my page so people can okay, see Okay, yeah. So yeah. anyway, thank you, brother. You're the man. All right. All right. And we'll see you again next time. All right. Cheers, man. Oh, and thanks to everyone else that showed up.
Yeah, thank you for showing up. Appreciate you. Well, that's a wrap. Another fantastic episode of the podcast. You can find us on all the social media platforms, wherever you serve, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, threads, wherever. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. And on our YouTube channel, don't forget to like, share, comment, and smash that subscribe button. If you're streaming audio for the podcast, you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcast programs. In the meantime, I like to tell everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time. Peace.